Okay, so let's finally start with some coding. So here we have imported pandas as pd and numpy as np. So we are going to import the dataset, load diabetes, and we are going to load in x and y as seen here. And I have also printed the description of the data frame. So here you can see it contains age, sex, BMI, and so on. And what we are going to predict is the target hot column, which is the quantitative measure of the disease progression one year after baseline. So this was a tiny recap from before. So let's now, first of all, start with importing our linear regression model. So we need to import it from scikit-learn. And what we usually do when we import things from scikit-learn is to import it on a function by function basis. So we are going to write from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression. So let us run this cell. And now we have imported the linear regression model. So let's secondly just select the columns we are going to work with, which is the H column, the BMI column. So let us run this cell. And now we have set it so that our features is just H and the BMI column here. Okay, next we need to initialize a linear regression. So this is done by saying that lin reg, short for linear regression, is equal to linear regression model, and then just initializing it here. And now we have created a linear regression model, but so far we haven't trained it on our data here. We are going to train it in the next step. And then we write the model in reg dot. To train the model, we use the method fit, and then we are taking in the x values and the y values, so the features and the targets. And then we run this cell, and now we have trained our linear regression model. So let's see that it works and that we can create a new point and predict on it. So for instance, let us say that some new data or a new patient has occurred. So we have some more data and we want to predict on this data. For instance, let one of the data points be just 0, 0, and the second be 0, 0,5 and 0, 3. And let's run it. And now we have two new data points here with one observation 0, 0, and one in observation 0, 5 and 0, 3. So let us predict on this new value. So let's write linear regression. And to predict, we can use the predict function. And then we take in this new data and then run the sum. And now we see that we get some output, the first being 152 and the second one being 496. Okay, so now we have created a model. And the next thing we need to answer is, is this model any good? So we want to formalize a way to say how well this model predicts on new data. So to do this, we will need some more theory. So let's go back to the theory. Okay, so let's go back to the theory. And what we want to answer is how can we measure the error? Here we have our model, we have trained it. And that means we have some data points here and we have some predicted values. And the mean square error is just taking this distance here. So the difference between the actual value and the predicted value and just summing all of the distances up. And since we do not want the error to become bigger when we have more points, we take the average. And just as an example of the mean square error, so here we have the same model as I introduced in the previous theory section. And let's say that we have two new data points, one which have a BMI of 25 and an age of 30, and an actual average blood sugar level of five, and one that has a BMI of 30 and 
an age of 39 and an actual average blood sugar level of 8. If we use this model here above, then it tells us that the first prediction is 5,84 something and the second prediction is 7,599. Here we have the predicted values and here we have the actual values. That means we can plug it into the formula for the mean square error. Since we have two data points, we divide by two here and then we sum up the two points or summing in from zero to one here. And if we just write it out, we have the predicted value minus the actual value here, plus the predicted value minus the actual value here. And what we end up with is a mean square error of 0 0.442. Okay, so that was how to measure the error, but now comes the problem. Let's say that we have a very simple example where we have two data points here, and we have used these two data points and that means that our model here just becomes the straight line through these two points. So if we try to use the training set as the way to measure the error, so what we end up with here is that the model will give us error zero. So if we take, for instance, the mean square error of these two points, we get the mean square error of zero. But these do not need to be representative of new data points. For instance, if we have a new data point here, we see that the error here is not zero. So this problem leads to the fact that we cannot use the training set in evaluating our model. So the principle is that if we try to measure the error on the training set, it will result in a lower error than the actual error on new data. So this means that to get a good approximation of the actual error, we need that the training set, so the set that we use for training and the test set, or the set we use to evaluate the model, needs to be distinct. Also, this distinctness is so the training set should not influence the test set in any way, shape or form. If it does, we call that data leakage. The definition of the test set is a subset of the data set, which we only use to test the model using a given metric. In our case, we are going to use the mean square error in this section here. And what we do with the data set is that we take the data set and also the targets and split them into two sets. One set we only use for training our model and the second part we only use for testing the model. Usually we'll use a higher percentage of the data points in training the model compared to testing the model. So for instance, we can use 70% for training and 30% for testing. So just a simple graphic here, here we have the entire data set containing the X and the Y values, so the targets and the features. And then we have some part of the data, which we are going to use to train the model and a second, potentially smaller part of the data that we are going to use to test our model. Okay, so let's see how this is in practice and let's do some coding. So let's start with the second coding part of this module. So the first thing we want to do is to split the data set into the training set and the testing set. And we can do this with the function train test split. And to import it, we need to import it from sklearn dot model selection. And we want to import the train test split function. Okay, so let's split the data into training and testing. So first we are going to write x train and then x test and then y train and then finally y test. And then we are going to do tuple and packing with the train test split. And it takes in X and Y values. And we can just run it now. And if we want to, for instance, say that it works, we can use Y train and then size to just see how long it is. And we see that Y train has 331 data points. And the test data has 111 data points. 
If you want to say which portion you use for training and which portion you use for testing, you can write test slice. And now you can write in a number between zero and one. So for instance, I can write one third. And now if I run the data and run this part again, we see that the Y test is exactly one third of the data. And if you want to get the same result as me, so this is completely optional, but if you want to follow along and get the same result, so the same error and so on, you can say that instead of doing this randomly, you can give in a seed, which will decide kind of the randomness or how the train test split works. So I will write random state and I can, for instance, write 32. So this is one way to do it, but here it is quite a lot of notation to just do this simple step. So what you can do is to write train test split and then just shift tab to get the documentation. And then you see all the different things you can do with it. And if you go a bit down, you will get an example code here. And what you can do is just to copy this line and then just overwrite it. So here you have this dot, dot, dot from the documentation. So we can just delete it. And then we can run this cell here and it will do exactly the same as what we have written here. So it's exactly the same random state and so on. So this is just a trick because it's difficult to recall the right order of X train and Y train and so on. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just to see the shape of the training set. Sorry, it should be underscore. And then we see that we have 296 data points and two features. So let's also see the shape of the test set with, for instance, ytest.shape. And we see that we have 146 data point in the test set. So now we have the training set and we want to train the model using the training set. And we want to test the model using the testing set. So then we need to create a new model because we cannot use the model up here because it was fitted to the entire data set. And now we are just going to fit it on the training set here. So we will write lin reg and we want to take the mean square error so let's call it lin reg mean square error and it's going to be a linear regression model once again so here is the model the next step was to fitting it so lin reg mean square error dot fit and now it was only on the training set so y x train Y train and then run it. So now we have trained our model and we can make prediction if we want as before. So the next step was to actually test how well this model performs on the data. To do this, we will need the mean square error as we introduced. And this is also from sklearn. And this is in the model metrics. And the function is mean squared error. Run the cell, and now we have imported the mean square error. So now we want to predict on the test set to get the predictions. So I'm going to call it ypred for y predictions. And we are going to use our model up here. So lin reg mean square error. And then to do predictions, we're going to use the predict function as before. And now we are going to take in our test data here. And now we hopefully have the predictions. So let's see. And here we see all the predictions for our test set here. So there's quite many of it. And now the final thing is to find the mean square error. So the mean square error is simply going to be 
using the mean square error function. And I want to take the mean square error between the predicted values and the true values. So y test here. And let me also write it out so that we can see it and run the sum. And now we get that the mean square error is this huge number here. So often uh, this is not really a good measure because it's squared always. So usually when you are talking about the error, you are talking about not the mean squared error, but the square root of the mean square error. So I'm just going to take the square root of the mean square error, sorry, and p square root. And then I get an error here. And the nice thing now is that I can compare this error to the standard deviation. So if the data set is completely random, this number here, so the mean square error and the variation should be exactly the same. So this probably only makes sense if you know a bit of statistics. So let's use the describe function on y to get out the standard deviation. And we see that the standard deviation is 77. So if we try to guess always the mean of the data set, then the value we get out should be 77. And we see here we get a bit better than just guessing the mean of the data. So we do not do very good on this data, but a bit better than just assuming that we can take the mean and just giving it out. So this was everything I wanted to do in this video. In the next video, we are going to talk a bit about the training step in the linear regression, and we are going to see how it actually works or one way it could work. Okay, so see you again in the next video.